Welcome back and good morning once again. If you are just joining us, it's still Daybreak Africa. Well, today we will be joined by Biaska, a public affairs analyst whose name is Ransom Chinonso. I will be discussing the controversies surrounding the indigenous people of Biafra, their demands and effects on citizens and Nigeria at large. Good morning, Ransom, and welcome to Daybreak Africa. Good morning, Ransom. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Fatima. Yes, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. I'm doing fine. Right. Ransom, welcome on the show. Thank you very much. Now, now quickly on my part, uh, IPOB has been uh, probably tagged uh, a terrorist organization in Nigeria. And I, I tend to actually ask the big question, what exactly do IPOB want? Because it's more like at some point their acclaimed intentions is not exactly aligned with their actions. There is a little bit of contradiction. So the question is, what exactly does IPOB want as an organization? What they want is equity, fairness. That is what they want. In government administration, you have the southeast, you have the southwest, you have the, the, the northeast, you have the north central, you, you have all of them. And when it comes in a ministerial appointment, when it comes to the political structure, it seems a particular region is ignored. And this has, you know, led to this agitation that if, since you are not recognizing us, since you are, are not, you are not giving us a percentage in, uh, in a particular political position, now allow us to go. So I, I simply, believe that this agitation is just about fairness and equity. Let there be equilibrium in the government. Let there be a fairness, let there be equity. Let those who deserve to get what they get, get it. Don't make it look as if one region should be uh, to be getting a greater a percentage of military appointment than the other. Now, for example, the uh, President Mohammed Buhari administration you know, in fact, it gingered or fueled this agitation of a thing. And, and if you look at the, uh, the ministerial list, those in his cabinet, you discover that those in a particular region, especially the southeast, didn't benefit from it. So what they are asking for is, let there be fairness, let there be equity. If you are going to have a particular, a, a particular percentage of ministerial appointment, at least, so, so, so region, should be able to benefit from them. You understand? So the total region should be able to benefit. So IPOP is just fighting for equity and fairness. That is just it. Okay, well, there are still reports that this equity and fairness, that's not the only thing they are fighting for. They are also agitated that they want a new, because of the, the government is not giving them listening ears, they want a new country, they want to separate, they want secession from Nigeria as a whole. Do you think this is reasonable if, 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 you know? You know, the, the issue of um, IPOB is when you get married to a wife and as a husband and you don't treat this wife very well, you don't give her the money that you, are, that you have to give her to make her hair, you don't give her money to buy clothes, you don't give her money to keep her beauty, okay. she'll begin to agitate. Be honest, she'll begin to agitate. She'll begin to tell you that if you don't give me this, I'm going to leave. If you don't give me money to me to take care of my head, I'm going to leave this life. If you don't give me money to, to do this, I'm going to look for another sugar that let me just choose that one. So this is what RPOB is doing. The federal government is if you look at the map of Nigeria, you've discovered that Southeast happens to be the smallest region in Nigeria. And they are not getting what they are meant to get. And as I said, when a husband do not treat his wife well, the wife begins to agitate. And this is what IPOP is doing. They are agitating because they are not being treated fairly. They are not being treated equally. You cannot have a ministerial appointment, or probably let me just say, a ministerial appointment of um, 25 cabinet members. And at the end of the day, only one person from the southeast. You have the Enugu, you have the Anambra, you have the Boeing State. You, you have the Imo state. And at the end of the day, you have the only one, only one in the whole of this region representing in your, in your cabinet. So what they are fighting for is just fairness. Treat me well. You understand? The laws are not agitated. 
because they are having a better share of this ministerial role. They are not targeting. So that is so. If you treat the South as well, and this is what Ohanes the Indigo is fighting for. If you treat us well, nobody will go on the street and say we we want to start our own. No, you have to make the sharing equal. We are one Nigeria, and we have been preaching this thing for a very long time. So if we believe that we are one Nigeria, everything must be shared equally. But it's quite unfortunate that nepotism has taken place in politics today. Everybody who's anybody that sees they want to favor the particular region that he or, uh, uh, that he or she is coming from. But what IBOP is asking for is fairness and equity. Give us what belongs to us and everybody will be happy. The laws are not targeted. They can't targeted because they are having what is duly meant for them. Well, now, you let's... mentioned um, the Hohaneze Indigo, and are they, the same, are they the same group, or they are different from the indigenous people of Biafra, or just the, they are the same? The, the same these are, no, these are, these are, this is an, uh, uh, a cultural organization that represents the whole of Indigo internationally. Do you understand? And they fight for the benefit of Indigo. So they have nothing to do with the IPOP, what they are fighting for as well is equity as well. So they have nothing to do with, they don't have any relationship with IPOB. This IPOB of a thing started as a result of the way the Southeast region we are treating. Now let's consider the approach this um, movement uh, uses to make their voice. Head. This includes uh, intimidation, it includes kill, killing of their very own tribesmen. Uh, now, the question is is this really the best approach? If you want equity, if you want fairness, does it have to include this level of bloodshed? You know, uh, points where you actually attack your own tribesmen, your own king's men? You know, uh, 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 let me quickly say this. Some people will always take an advantage of goodwill. Of people. Now let me come in. Now the kind of idea was a peaceful agitation for a self-independent for the Southeast region. Now politics came in and some persons began to sponsor political talks to destabilize the Southeast. This is something that is happening in other states as well. There are people who sponsor terrorists. There are people who finance kidnappers. Now, IBOP made a law that there's going to be a sit at home for them to, you know, the visit at home is going to be a respect for the release of their detained leader, Mazen Namdekano. And at a point, they suspended it. A press release was done by the publicity manager, Emma Powerful, that the sit at home one they had been suspended. But because of the effectiveness of the sit at home in the southeast, politics came in. Both those who are agitating for Biafra and those who are not agitating for Biafra and started using this sit at home to groom another government. IPOP is not known for unknown government. IPOP is not meant for kidnapping. As of today, yeah, as of this morning, this morning, uh, a truck was intercepted by the Nigerian army. And this truck came all the way from Mali, heading to Anambra State. And the two people who we are called, yeah, the driver from Ogo State. The guy who accompanied the truck is from Ghana. Now, what is those ammunition, those bullets, what are they going to Anambra to go and do? That is my question. What are they going to South East to go and do? When they are not being accompanied by any military, but accompanied by a driver, all the way from Mali. And this truck past several checkpoints, military, custom, name it, 
and it was intercepted in an embassy. So what am I saying, Francis, in, this, in, in this sense? People are not sponsoring human beings who are terrorizing Southeast. And this is what IDOP do not stand for. They do not terrorize people. Let me now share this with you. As of last week, my secondary school classmate was kidnapped. Osnachi, he was kidnapped. And as I speak to you, we are raising 500,000 Naira to see how we can pay to the kidnappers to release him. So IBOP is not known for this. So people are not hiding under the umbrella of we are agitating for Biafra, committing crimes, kidnapping people, killing people. So IPOP is not known for this. IPOP is only agitating for equity, and I keep saying this, equity and fairness. That is what IPOP is agitating for. They are not known for men. At this point, it's safe to say the, the entire goal or the aim of this uh, movement has been uh, defeated. So if it seems uh, defeated, why not uh, it's time for probably the IPOB to maybe take a step back, you know, evaluate because it stands. It's more like, uh, I guess in the Bible says, a house fight no, against itself will not stand. Why not really uh, come together and really get, your, uh, get the affairs right? Before coming on no, to, because at this point, no one will actually want to, nobody actually knows the difference between the unknown gunmen or, 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 or the IPOB, you know. They, they just believe no. that you guys are all for, for, for fights. No, I, I, I've, I've been able to delineate these two the unknown gunmen and the IPOB. IPOB is fighting for peace, they are not fighting for war. They are fighting for equity. They are not fighting to kill their brother. And this is what a man powerful, the publicity uh, secretary of uh, uh, IPOB have been saying for a very long time, they do not stand for war. The issue of sit at home has been long suspended. Now, let me chip in this in. It has been suspended. And a man who is in Finland, Simon Epa, who claims to be the Prime Minister of IPOB is in Finland issuing one week slowdown, one week sit at home in causing of release of Nam Dekano. And he is not even in Nigeria. And as I speak to you, Ohane Zendibu has written to President Bola Ahmed Tunubu on how he can stop this guy who is in Finland causing trouble in Southeast. How he can stop him. And the only way he can stop him is by releasing in the canal. And meanwhile, during the presidential campaign of Bola Ahmed Tunubu, he made a promise. He said if Southeast votes for him, he is going to negotiate for the release. And this was in November 23rd or 22nd, yes, last day before the presidential election. He made this uh, promise. You can fast check me that he's going to negotiate with Buhari for him to release Nam de Kano. And now he's the president, and they are waiting for him to fulfill his promise. The whole ground for the release of Nam de Kano is already on his way. But some persons who have who have been sponsoring or not government are the ones destabilizing the Southeast. But let me tell you this: Unam Nikano will be released when the time comes. Okay, well, we hope for the right thing, for the right cause, actually. Well, I guess what Ezekiel was asking earlier on, he was like, if this same, um, okay, we understand that the IPOB are going for equity and um, fair representation in governance, but if this, their, um, their movement has been jeopardized, why should the government give a listening ear to them if this themselves, they can't handle whatever jeopardy is going on within IPOB? No, I, 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 I think, um, the, like, as I said, President Bolamir Tunubu made a promise before he became the president that he was going to negotiate. And this was a process already. And I believe that um, those who are representing the good image of Biafra and IVOP, they are already reminding him of what he should do. Now, for example, uh, when he released his uh, ministerial appointment about uh, the chief of staff and the rest, uh, there was a... Uh, uh, 
there was an appointment for, for the staff is and uh, for the uh, chief of staff if i'm not uh, uh, mistaken so i strongly believe that Tulubu will definitely do the right thing or doing the equity that the southeast people have been fighting for in government now, do hello? you think, yeah, yes, hello. You're me. Do, you, do you think uh, so far the, the, the manner in which the government has been handling this situation is the, is the, is the, is the best possible way so far? It is not the best possible manner because um, the court has already um, um, discharged Nam the Kano, but President Mohammed Bari, who left office, refused to release him based on new um, count charges that he levied uh, against him. So, and I strongly believe in everything there, there are uh, due process. And by this month, 22nd or 23rd of within this period, there's going to be another appearance when the Kano on his case. So hopefully, as, as I said, he will be released when the time comes. The lawyer, uh, Aloy Idimako, yes, what did you say something? Are you there with me? Yeah, I'm with in you. Arrest. Now, I would like to know your, your thoughts as to the activities uh, surrounding it in, in total, from his, from his arrest to, to, to this point so far. His arrest is illegal. We should know it is illegal. And why is it? Because you, you yes, it, it is illegal because you, you arrested someone uh, in Kenya who didn't do anything. It is not a crime to agitate. It is not. There was warrant for his arrest. He, I think, he, they say he committed uh, treason. He, he committed this. He did it to me personally. I'm speaking from my. He did it. There are people who solemnly agitate for what is right for their independence, and they don't get them arrested. But you can agitate peacefully. You can agitate peacefully. So his uh, arrest. It's illegal to me. And everyone knows that. It's illegal to me. Now you charge him to court and court examine, did everything, discharge him, and you refuse to release him. Why? So it simply means that the federal government is above the law. So why have you refused to release a man who the court say that you should release? So that's the question. Okay, so you're saying Inamdi Kanu is innocent of whatever has been charged against him. He is, oh, he is, he, he, he is agitating for what he feels is the right thing. And if you look at it, don't, he don't forget, don't forget, Ansem. Uh, the issue of agitation is not is not exactly a problem. You know, you have your right, you have your freedom to you know you know to uh, to, to speak up. You know, at every point where you have this level of uh, discontent. But I think the question is how uh, uh, the manner at which people tend to go about it. Now, okay, now. One, one way, one way or another, the IPO actually brought about the, the sit at home issue. Even if at some point you said it was uh, probably hijacked, hijacked by unknown government and other, but at some point they brought it up. Yeah, it, it, it was. Now, when uh, before, before and there was and no and don't forget there were issues also as to certain insightful statements. You know, uh, people believe uh, Mazin and the Kanu was, was making, they usually mix as regarding this issue. So, uh, saying all in all, uh, let me hear your thoughts anyway. Okay, now, before Nam Nekano flew to UK, he was in Nigeria. His house in other state was raided by security men. Why? So, does it mean that people cannot agitate peacefully again? He was in Nigeria when he was at Malachi. He was in he was in Uganda, so he left when his house was ready, and only God knows why. Probably if uh, it was a plan of assass uh, assassination, or the man had to flee. He went to UK, and that was where he now uh, started broadcasting about the freedom of Biafra. Now I can tell you this: if you listen carefully about what Namdekano predicted about Nigeria, it is happening today. It is. 
about how a particular region will be treated by a particular government. It is happening today. So, and as I said, there is nothing wrong you agitating as a wife towards your husband that the way he is treating you, you don't like it. It is your right. Now, where it is an offense is when your husband begins to beat you. That is when it becomes an offense. It is your right as a wife to agitate. As a husband, if your wife is not giving you food, it is your right as a husband to agitate. But if when if anything happens yeah, to that wife while in the house, who are they going to be? Who is going to be held responsible for that? When the man is agitating. No, when the, with all the agitation going on by the wife, if anything happens, who is the person that are going to hold responsible for the actions of the wife or whatever has gone wrong no, it, in the home? No, are going to be held responsible no. for that. It's definitely going to be the husband. The, the, so I, if I, your I, if, wait, if your wife is if your wife is agitated, it is left for you as a husband to listen to her. You don't take her to court. You say, court, my wife is disturbing me. You listen to her. And that is what IBOP is agitating for. They are not well treated. Why not listen to her? If the federal government can negotiate with terrorists, organize a program for them to rehabilitate them, even to the point of paying them. Then why can't this same federal government do same to the southeast? What is the difference there? A terrorist, we have seen a man with um, a, a, a few terrorists in the in the north who have killed people, some have repented, even joined their vigilante group in the uh, in the north. And nothing is done. They are not even being charged. And they're working freely. Current AK-47. And here is a man who is fighting for something right for his people. And he's been arrested. Now, the why is it that those who are... Okay. Please go on. You want to say something? No, no. Oh, yeah. So me. why is it so... Why, so why, why, why are we having this, this unbalanced, you know, treatment? I, I, I don't want to dive into the north because they are not my major concern. But what we are talking about here is the South East crisis. Sincerely, we wish that the sit at home and the crisis to come to an end. But I keep saying this. Even now the economy is released today, is this or not government are they going to stop? That's another problem because it has gone beyond what personally I thought. Kidnapping, robbery, stealing, and the rest. And who is providing ammunition? And I give an instance about a truck that was intercepted this morning by the Nigerian army, coming from Mali. So who is financing these people? Who is giving them ammunition? Now, you, 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 you spoke on uh, fairness, you spoke on equity, and, and all that. Now, uh, during Buhari's uh, administration, we, they, there were plenty of talks as to regarding nepotism. Uh, uh, currently, uh, President uh, Bola Ahmed Nubu is on the seat, and we already have awards as to nepotism. So it's more like, uh, it's not really peculiar or unique just to the East. Now, we have, uh, say, the, the South-South there, we have the south at, at some point, you know, we all have our share of that feeling of, of nepotism. Now, it's more like, don't you think you're actually trying to, we at some point tried to uh, put all the blame on the federal government, because you spoke about, you know, not having equal representation. Now. The eastern state has their governors. Are you with me, Ransa? I'm with you, I'm with you. They have their governors. They have their senators. They have their uh, House of uh, Rep members on national level and, and state level. They have uh, 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 their, their, their level of uh, allocation that comes to them monthly, uh, bi-monthly, or yearly, at, at, as usual. So the, the entire feeling of uh, get, uh, the, the sense of belonging all of a sudden is quite, is quite appalling because I don't really know, is it just based on ministerial appointment? Because in your words, I remember you made a statement of uh, ministerial appointment, you know, saying in 25 you could just give one and all that. Is it just based on ministerial appointment? Now, it is not just about ministerial appointment. Let me use this word, otherwise. It covers everything that you can imagine. Security, economy, a political appointment, what anything that you can think of, it just covers otherwise. 
That is just it. Okay. Now, okay. in the case now, in the case of the senatorial appointment, if it is when Nigeria is Nigeria, eh, ordinarily that thing should have gone to a South East person. If it is when Nigeria should be Nigeria, this has nothing to do with lobbying, 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 lobbying. No, no, no. If it is when Nigeria is Nigeria, everything will be shared equally. You take this, you take this, everybody will be happy. For you, so what happened? At the end of the day, even Ojo Zokalo, who felt that you know, he was going to be the next incident president, his hope was that he couldn't play the card well. And he lost. So, that is it. Even the ministerial, the ministerial uh, list that is coming out, uh, only God knows it has been delayed. Even the ones that I, the leaked ones that I saw, it is still the way it is. A particular region again was being favored more than. So, if a particular region, meanwhile, this is not only, we also have Oduduwa uh, Republic, yeah. who are also agitating as well. But they are not as, you know, they are not um, that long as the South East. They are also maybe, agitating. Maybe, maybe, maybe the world issue is more violent at some point. Because, no. like I said, as, as, as far as persons outside East are concerned, we, they tend to classify everybody IPOP. Now, if, 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 not, if, not for, if not for the clarification you give as to making us understand there are some persons actually tend to hijack the good intentions of the people and then go into kidnap and, and, and all that. Now, now I, why, why don't you actually say this? Why don't you feel there are better ways to actually approach situations? Now, for instance, like I said it earlier, if, uh, if, 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 if a motive, a good intention was hijacked at some point, don't you think it, it is better or it is reasonable enough if uh, the woman in your world tends to you know, take a step back, reevaluate, you know, make sure everybody are on, this, on, 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 the on that, on that on, on board, you know, on yeah. the same train, you know, so as to actually get the best out of a negotiation? Would you prefer if someone from the south sorry let's let's just okay someone from the southwest who is eligible for that position but yet a south because the fact that they want a south is uh personnel to represent that region that position do you think if it, and he's not fit enough would you rather choose the southeast person to come up and take that position rather than this for instance from the southwest who is more eligible and fit to handle that position you know why i wouldn't want to dive into this question is because uh, the 2023 election exposed a whole lot of things. If you go on social media, it, it, it looks as if a particular region is so much hated. It's so much hated. Starting from the presidential candidates of the uh, uh, of the uh, Labour Party, uh, and be you know, some persons have been making some uh, gutry um, uh, comment about a particular, even at a point, at the point that was a serious war in social media, you know, between two two tribes. So th that's why I wouldn't want to bring a tribe into this discussion concerning Pakistan as well. But what I'm saying is this, when Nigeria is Nigeria, believe you me, the Senate president would have gone to the South East. And if you look at it from sharing, everything, everybody will be happy. Everybody will be happy. Now, if you look at it, now, South East is not even holding any vital position. So just name one crucial, important position that the South East is holding currently. They just, they are just there. Like, they are just there. So that is what they And as I said, IPOP is not enough of value. What they stand for is their own hope. So, and as I said, people have hijacked in fact, people have begun to groom unknown government who act as IPOP members. And they are not. They are not. If you take to the, if you go back to the assistance on when and then the kind of was agitating, it was peaceful. Peaceful rally. Peaceful agitation. If you go to nature, peaceful agitation. If you go to Enugu, peaceful agitation. Right. But now, and people were not carrying off. Then, people are not carrying off. They were only carrying the flag of Biafra, waving it. But now, people are carrying God. And IPOP don't know them. We don't know them. IPOP is not known for kidnapping. 
They are not known for killing. They are not attrib attributed to such value. Right. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you Thank you. Thank you very much, Thank you very much. All right. I, I guess right. at this point, uh, time became a burden. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, thank you for joining us on the Break Africa, and we hope to have you next time, Ransom. It's my pleasure. Thank my you. pleasure. All right. All right, viewers, at this point, you head over from uh, Ransom, Chinonso, Public Affairs, and at least trying to make us understand IPOP is different from the <laughs> unknown government issue. And I really hope this issue of terrorism and, and, and the fight and the kidnap actually comes to an end at some point. At this point, I will be rounding up from our Ondo studio and handing you gently over to our Lego studio. We have so much more for you. I remain the Ezekiel Organ. I am Fatima Ibrahim.